Samsung Electronics Workers Announce Indefinite Strike China and Belarus Conduct Joint Military Exercises NATO Member Norway Donates 6 F-16 Jets to Ukraine Slain Islamic State Leader's Wife Sentenced to Death Death Valley Sets New Daily Record One More Simpsons Prediction Becomes Reality Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It's Friday, July 12th, and here are your top stories. Unionized workers at Samsung Electronics declare an indefinite strike on Wednesday to pressure South Korea's biggest company to accept their calls for higher pay and other benefits. Thousands of members of the National Samsung Electronics Union launched a temporary three-day strike on Monday. But on Wednesday, the union announced an indefinite strike, accusing management of being unwilling to negotiate. Samsung Electronics says there have been no disruptions to production. A Samsung statement said Samsung Electronics will ensure no disruptions occur in the production lines. The union said it has engaged in unspecified disruptions on the company's production lines to get management to come to the negotiating table if the strikes continue. The union statement said, We are confident of our victory, but didn't specify how many of its members would join the extended strike. It earlier said that 6,540 of its members would participate in the earlier, three-day strike. That would represent only a fraction of Samsung Electronics' total workforce, estimated at about 267,860 globally. About 120,000 of them are in South Korea. Earlier this year, union members and management held rounds of talks on the union's demand for higher wages and better working conditions, but they failed to reach an agreement. Belarus's defense ministry said Belarus and China kick off 11-day joint military training exercises this Monday, with activities taking place just miles from the border of Poland, a NATO and European Union member. The joint exercises are being held at a training ground near the city of Brest on the Belarus-Poland border, and some 40 miles from Belarus's border with Ukraine. They come as Russia's invasion of that country more than two years ago has hardened geopolitical divisions and continues to threaten broader regional security. The start of the anti-terrorism exercises coincided with a visit by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to Warsaw, where he signed a security agreement with Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk. They also began on the eve of NATO's 75th anniversary summit in Washington a gathering where leaders will look to shore up support for Ukraine. NATO and the EU have long accused Belarus of weaponizing the border by pushing asylum seekers from third countries to its borders, and the joint exercises will no doubt be seen by some as a further provocation. CNN has reached out to NATO for comment. This latest showing of their security cooperation comes just days after Belarus joined the Beijing and Moscow-backed Shanghai Cooperation Organization SCO. Norway Prime Minister Jonas Garstor said Wednesday that they would donate six F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine to defend itself from Russian attacks, adding that the jets will be important for Kyiv. Ukraine has long pleaded for the sophisticated fighters to give it a combat edge against Russian firepower. No date was announced as to when Norway will donate the six jets. But Gahar Stor said, we aim to start the donations during 2024. He said Kiev's ability to defend itself against attacks from the air is absolutely crucial in its defensive battle against Russia. Gar Stor spoke before he arrived in Washington for the NATO summit. Last year, he said during a trip to Kyiv that Norway would donate F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine but didn't specify how many. After 42 years of service, the Nordic NATO member phased out its aging fleet of F-16 fighters in 2021 and is replacing them with new F-35A joint strike fighter jets. Norway is the third European country, after the Netherlands and Denmark, to donate F-16 planes to Ukraine. Oil-rich Norway is one of the world's biggest donors to Ukraine. An Iraqi court issued a death sentence against one of the wives of the late brutal Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, alleging that she was complicit in crimes committed against Yazidi women captured by the militant group. The ruling comes weeks before the 10-year mark of ISIS attacks on the Yazidi 
religious minority in the northern Iraqi region of Sinjar in early August 2014, killing and capturing thousands. The UN said that campaign against the Yazidis amounted to genocide. The statement did not name the defendant, but two court officials identified her as Asma Muhammad, who was arrested in 2018 in Turkey and later extradited. A senior Iraqi security official told the Associated Press that another wife of al-Baghdadi and his daughter, also extradited from Turkey, had been sentenced to life in prison. The officials spoke on condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the case publicly. On June 29, 2014, al-Baghdadi, known as one of the most ruthless jihadist leaders, declared the militant group's caliphate over large swaths of Iraq and Syria. In 2019, he was killed in a U.S. raid in Syria, dealing a major blow to the group, which has lost its hold on all the areas it once controlled, though some of its cells continue to carry out attacks. Hundreds of new temperature records could be broken next week as sweltering heat drags on across the country, impacting millions of Americans in the western and eastern U.S. Nearly 70 million people are under heat alerts on Sunday after over three dozen high temperature records were either set or tied on Saturday. Highs in the upper 32 degrees Celsius to 43 degrees Celsius are expected along the west coast and parts of the Great Basin. By Wednesday, over 250 warm high and low temperature records could be set. Nearly 40 million people in the contiguous U.S. are forecast to see temperatures above 37 degrees Celsius over the next seven days. A slew of daily temperature records were broken this 4th of July weekend. On Saturday, Death Valley reached 53.3 degrees Celsius, breaking the daily record of 52.7 degrees Celsius set on July 6, 2007. Las Vegas reached 46.1 degrees Celsius, tying records from 2007 and 1989. Kingman, Arizona, reached 42.7 degrees Celsius, breaking the previous record of 42.2 degrees Celsius. On Sunday, temperatures in Las Vegas hit 48.8 degrees Celsius for the first time in recorded history. In more than 32,000 days of records, the temperature had never climbed above 47.2 degrees Celsius prior to Sunday. Extremely dangerous heat is expected to persist in the West, with excessive heat watches, warnings, and heat advisories in effect for much of the region. Heat warnings are active in California and Nevada due to the increased risk of heat-related illnesses. It's a classic case of live imitating art. Nearly 30 years after hip-hop group Cypress Hill agreed to appear in an episode of The Simpsons featuring them playing with the London Symphony Orchestra, the band will make this unlikely fictional collaboration a reality on Wednesday when it performs its Black Sunday album in the UK capital. The Grammy-nominated artist will collaborate with the orchestra at London's Royal Albert Hall, playing hits that include Insane in the Brain, which was also featured in the 1996 episode. Cypress Hill appeared alongside the Smashing Pumpkins in Homer Palooza, in which Homer tries to impress his kids by getting involved in stunts as part of the music festival scene. The Simpsons has developed a reputation in recent years for predicting the future. It correctly called the emergence of video calling, the winner of the Nobel Prize for Economics, and the presidency of Donald Trump. Although calling the real-life combination of the hip-hop act and the orchestra coincidence might be a stretch. On its ticketing website, the orchestra said that history will finally be made. According to BMG Records, Cypress Hill has sold over 20 million albums worldwide and more than 4 million copies of its Black Sunday album. The answer for yesterday was C, impaired. There are 1.7 million blind and visually impaired people in Britain. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of one more Simpsons prediction becomes reality. Number one, collaboration. She wrote the book in collaboration with one of her students. Number two, insane. 十分愚蠢的, 疯狂的, 危险的. This job is driving me insane. Number three, coincidence. 令人吃惊的巧合, 巧事. By sheer coincidence, I met the person we had been discussing the next day. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Monday news. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I will see you next time.